Hello, Emily here with Senior Helpers. Thanks for joining us today. Today we have Sarah Josie from Golden Poppy Herbal Apothecary. It's a mouthful, but it's definitely great. All right, so Sarah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. So my name is Sarah, as she said, and I own Golden Poppy Herbal Apothecary. We are located in downtown Fort Collins, um, right on College Avenue. We've been here for about, in this location, for almost five years, but we've been in Fort Collins for eight at this point in time. And for those of you who uh, don't know what an herbal apothecary is, we sell all of the other medicinal herbs um, besides that one that most people think of when they think of medicinal herbs. And that can range anything from chamomile to peppermint to some of the more um, kind of exotic herbs that you might think of, ashwagandha and ginseng, goji berries, all of those things. And we also carry aromatherapy products and bulk supplies so you can make your own natural body care. And what I was going to talk about today was give just kind of a little introduction to what herbs are and why you might want to use them in your everyday life. So herbal medicine is the original medicine before the invention of what we think of as conventional medicine now, going to your doctor, getting a prescription, all of those types of things. People use plants as their primary form of medicine. Um, and in fact, they even have documented animals using plants as medicines, especially um, chimpanzees. They've seen be very specific and intentional. Even your dog is using a plant as a medicine every time it eats grass because its stomach doesn't feel well. That's a dog seeking out a plant for a specific ailment that it's feeling, which is pretty fascinating. Uh, another really good example is cats and catnip. Cats love catnip. It's another form of herbal medicine just in the uh, animal world. So using herbs for medicine can look like a lot of different things. It's not just using this plant for this rem, you know, for this ailment, although that does happen a lot. But one of the things that we as herbalists really love to, you know, help people with is learning how to use plants in their everyday life, to just increase their overall wellness and sense of vitality. Some of the most simple ways that this can be done is with herbal tea. Most people are pretty familiar with the idea of using herbal tea. You know, here in Colorado, especially um, celestial seasonings and their sleepy time tea. Nationally, nationwide, it's a very famous tea, but if you've ever been to the Celestial Seasonings tea plant that's just outside of Boulder, you get to firsthand experience the magic that is the herbal tea world. Um, but most people, when they're using herbal teas in that way, aren't necessarily thinking about the fact that they are using herbs as medicine to increase their wellness or improve something or help something that they're experiencing. So, um, you know, chamomile tea for sleep, peppermint tea when you have an upset stomach, or ginger tea when you feel nauseous. All of those really common home remedies are examples of herbal medicine, and they have a really powerful effect on your body, even if they seem really gentle. And that's one of the things that's so lovely about herbs, is that the best way to get started using them and to incorporate them in your life is to start with those kind of more gentle herbs that can be used on a regular basis that aren't going to interact with any medications or are really unlikely to have some sort of side effect because that can definitely happen. Um, but that's the simplest way to just start using plants and getting more familiar with them. So a couple of the plants that I want us to talk about today um, that are a little less well known, but still fall into that category of being really gentle and safe and easy to use on a regular basis. The first one is nettle. So I don't know if might be a little hard to see. There we go. Nettle. Um, so this is a plant that you can definitely grow in Colorado. It's really water loving. Um, but its main attribute is that it's a powerhouse for 
micro minerals and micronutrients. So it's a really nutrient dense plant and drinking a cup or more of nettle tea every day is a really good way to get in a lot of extra nutrients into your diet. So if you're someone who struggles with getting a lot of greens in or vitamins aren't really your thing, they don't sit well with your stomach, nettles is a really lovely way to just incorporate extra nutrients into your diet on a regular basis. Another one that I really love is hawthorn berries. So these are hawthorn berries, this, this plant right here. Hawthorn also grows here in Colorado. It's really easy to cultivate here. One of the magical things about hawthorn is there's actually a significant amount of clinical studies that have been done on hawthorn berries specifically and documenting their effectiveness at helping to reduce cardiovascular disease and being cardioprotective. So all of the diseases and ailments that fall into the realm of cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, all of those things, people have used hawthorn berries for throughout the centuries. And because they have such a long history of use, clinical studies have been done on hawthorn berries to see what their effects are on that. So hawthorn is another one where in tea on a regular basis, for one, it's really delicious, can help increase your body's ability to protect and take care of your heart and your veins and all of the systems involved in your cardiovascular system. So it's one of those ones, again, where it's really gentle and safe to drink a cup of Hawthorne tea every day, and it's just going to do a lot of good. The next one that we have is linden. Linden flowers and leaves are really, really common around Fort Collins. Um, they have been planted as ornamentals all over the place in Fort Collins. So if you've ever in this, I think they're just about to bloom actually. If you walk down Old Town, if you ever pass a tree that has the kind of light green leaves at the end and the little kind of whitish flowers and it smells really sweet, you're probably walking underneath the linden tree. Uh, now I wouldn't suggest harvesting from linden trees in downtown Fort Collins. Um, for one, I think they might spray for mosquitoes down here. And so you don't wanna be harvesting from plants that have potentially been sprayed with mosquito spray. But uh, if you have a linden tree in your backyard, you can definitely harvest from there. Linden is another plant similar to hawthorn that has a lot of clinical studies documenting its effectiveness with cardiovascular issues and specifically blood pressure. The other thing that linden is really well known for and has a long history of use is just calming the nervous system and assisting with sleep. So it's a really, again, gentle herb. Um, it's very commonly used in European countries, especially Germany, in fact. Linden tea is really well known for being given to kids in the evening when they're having a hard time falling asleep, but it's also effective on adults. Um, the reason they talk about it a lot with kids is because it's so gentle and children don't need some of the stronger herbs that we have for sleep, but there's no reason that adults can't also benefit from it. Linden also has an effect on the nervous system, so it helps kind of calm that nervous system down. So if you are feeling frazzled or tense or anxious for any reason, because none of us have anything to feel anxious about right now, Linden is a really good one for just kind of going in and settling all of those things out. You can drink during the day. It's not going to knock you out, um, you know, in the middle of the day. It makes a really lovely sun tea. In fact, you can make it into a sun tea and then ice it and then drink it during the day. If you're someone whose nervous system just tends to run on high, it can just help settle all of that down. And then the last one I wanted to talk about today was chamomile. So this is another one that is really, really commonly used. And a lot of times people don't necessarily think about it being kind of an herbal medicine, but it's very powerful. In the same vein as linden, it's also a plant that's really, really nice for helping people fall asleep and calm the nerves, especially children, again, uh, but also adults. The other thing that's really nice about chamomile is it's considered to be mildly bitter. So it's got a sweetness and also bitterness when you just drink it in a tea. But what's nice about the bitterness of it is that actually works with your digestive system as well. So the flavor of bitter things stimulates your digestive system 
system to work better. So all of the bitter flavors, what they do is they send the signal to turn on the digestive juices in your system. So before you eat or after you eat, stimulating your system with bitters helps your body digest and assimilate the food that you've eaten and therefore the nutrients that you've eaten better. So chamomile is a really lovely one for anyone who has kind of um, what I call nervous stomachs. Chamomile calms the nervous system and then that bitter will help settle the stomach and help your body process and move through whatever's in your digestive system a little bit better. So those are four of my just kind of favorite herbs that are really easy to use, really simple to use. Um, you can find all of these plants most of them you can find in grocery stores in your tea aisle. In fact, they're all pretty common, commonly available and really easy to use and really easy to find. Um, but of course, you know, if you don't have a grocery store near you that has them, you can always come to Fort Collins um, and we have them in stock and we're always happy to talk with you about whatever plants you're interested in. The other thing that's always of big concern is while most of these plants that I've talked about are really safe, there are other plants in the herb world that interact with medications and interact with certain ailments that you need to be aware of before you start using those plants. And so that's we're coming in and talking to one of us herbalists, or right now we are doing phone consultations for people who um, are still staying at home and don't wanna come be in public, you can call us and set up a consultation. We're happy to talk with you about any of those issues and find plants that you have uh, that might work well for you. Um, and a couple of other options too for people who are really interested in kind of digging into the herb world. Um, there's a couple of books that we carry. This one, Herbs for Long Lasting Health. This is written by Rosemary Gladstar and it's a really simple, easy, small book, great reference book for anyone who wants to start digging into this world. And then this one, Herbs for Healthy Aging. This is by uh, David Hoffman. He wrote an entire book just about herbs to help improve longevity of life and improve the quality of life, especially as we kind of start to get into our later years. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I think you, Emily might still be muted. <laughs> well, as Emily from the time. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us. That was a great presentation. And I have so many things to learn from you still. So I'm just so excited to stop by Golden Poppy and figure out what things I need personally. And I'm sure everyone who's watching this video can stop by or give them a call and just figure out what specific things they want to improve in their body and try to figure out with the medicine that they're taking and the things that they're already doing, what would be best and what would be the best way moving forward for them. So thanks so much, Sarah, for joining us. And I hope everyone enjoyed the video. All right. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.